some of the most remote corners of the Western Indian Ocean. Coastal communities rely on an unlikely and fascinating creature of the sea, the octopus. Armed with only a spear, some men, but predominantly women and children, walk out into the exposed reef flats to hunt octopus during low tide. Most of this octopus is sold directly to commercial buyers based in villages, which export frozen octopus around the world. An octopus is one of the most significant cash crops produced in both southwest Madagascar and the Mauritian island of Rodrigues. Maintenant, la pêcherie d'ourit, comme elle est pratiquée à Maurice, à pied, avec très peu d'outils, parce qu'on parle d'un fer à béton euh, plié, ça ne demande aucun investissement pour les femmes. C'est un produit, c'est merveilleux, qui se conserve en séché. Donc c'est-à-dire que la femme qui a fait 10 kg ou 20 kg par une bonne pêche, eh ben, elle a assez de protéines pour 15 jours. In the Western Indian Ocean, the common reef octopus spends most of its life in shallow reefs near to the shore. However, when the females mature, they move to deeper parts of the reef to reproduce. Female octopus lay eggs only once in a lifetime and guard them without eating for up to two weeks before the eggs hatch. Octopus are one of the fastest growing marine animals, so even short-term octopus fishing bans can allow populations to recover and result in bigger catches and more money for fishers in as little as two months. In southern Madagascar, Blue Ventures, a British marine conservation organization, has been collaborating with communities and the local marine institute since 2003. Today, we talk about the gleaning octopus. It's a gleaning octopus, is someone walking in the flat reef, and they walk it slowly with the spear, and they see the hole around the, around the little of a piece of a rock around there, and they will be stick under that hole, and they twist it until they feel the octopus grab in the spear, and the tentacle will come out. They will be not quickly, that's octopus there. In 2006, Felungieke, a community-run marine protected area, was formed when a collection of 25 villagers along the southwest coast of Madagascar decided to take responsibility for protecting the marine environment on which they depend. Through this collective effort, communities also developed local laws called DINA to help them establish rules to manage these closures. To reinforce the DIN, which is at the level of the village, we could eventually reinforce the level et des Fouctanes, ou également le remonter au niveau des communes ou au niveau du district, district et finalement au niveau de la région. Nous une réserve, nous avons 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 the results show that the closures are really working. On average, fishers catch nearly twice as much octopus in the month following a closure which doubles fisher income. Tengen ta lo hona ngeri ki fia huru teo nisi. Si nisi nze e. Fena nizao. Nuna pisi bulu vantiri sita tua. Anda vato ke tua. Safe. Ngeri ha nzeke yi mitumbu. Are mi hamaro. A polis eze kuwa. Ngeri rezerva kuwa. La sinis ti rezerva. Kana ka fara mandimbro. Sa una tachiraha. Fona pisi rezerva u. In 2008, five fishermen from the Mauritian island of Rodrigues came to Madagascar to learn more about the closures. A lot of the data that was collected uh, in Rodrigues uh, shows that uh, the stock has seriously been depleted. We assessed the catches with the fishermen uh, by training them uh, and the catches show that uh, most of the females that get caught uh, are actually under the age of first maturity. If they're not sufficiently large and old enough to reproduce, the stocks tend to crash. Mm -hmm. 
Les autorités locales prévoient la fermeture de la pêche à l'ourite pendant deux mois à Rodrigue. Une mesure qui prendra effet à partir du temps. The government of Rodrigues, inspired by the Malagasy government's six-week octopus fishing ban, began planning a closure of its own with support from the European Union. Octopus fishing was halted across the entire island of Rodrigues for two months, from August to October 2012. So I'm Giovanni Raffin, I work for Shores Rodrigues, which is a marine research training and education center. And uh, regarding the octopus closure, I think it's a, it's a very uh, important for a project for Rodrigues. It should have been done like ages ago, but uh, it's better late than never. If we continue fishing like this with octopus, we had about 14,000 people who earned their life from fishing octopus. And uh, it's decreasing very, very rapidly. And if we continue like this without this closure, by 2014, 2015, there will be no octopus left, at least not for everyone. Sa bonne clôture, y avoir deux objectifs. Premier objectif, sa petite zourite, demi livre, arriver jusqu'à une livre. Sa premier objectif. So, sa bonne pêcheur, capable de gagner plus d'argent. Ça simple. Quand ou avoir petit poussin, ou attendre sa poussin devenir poule pour pouvoir le vendre. Ça assez facile. Deuxième chose, Sa clôture permet d'arriver à avoir grosse femelle capable de repartir au-delà du lagon pour reproduire. Donc ça, ça l'idée derrière ça. Maintenant, où devoir savoir et où savez que sa bonne pêcherie sur Rodrigue pour sa zourite y a 800 tonnes par an. Y maintenant descendre à 100-150 tonnes. Ça, beaucoup d'argent perdu. Oui. Nous nous supposons qu'il serait capable de marcher parce que tout, tout ça fait nous bien essayer pour nous connaître. Ils vont pour nous payer, pour nous la mettre aussi, nous protéger. Un jour, même nous pas, nous, nous pas connaître, un jour, nous ne pas connaître ça veut dire, oui, mais nous avons des enfants, ailleurs des enfants, nous pouvons nous connaître. Closing off a source of income and food for those who rely on it, even temporarily, requires careful planning by all those involved. During the octopus fishery closure, the fishers will be called to do other alternative activities. They will be called to do online activities such as clean up rodri, rehabilitation of canals and walls, and also fishers themselves will be called to do surveillance. By doing surveillance, they will be called to be responsible of the fishery themselves. Ici, Il faut comprendre que c'est une situation exceptionnelle parce que aujourd'hui on parle de compensation. À Madagascar, il n'y a pas de compensation. Les pêcheurs ont décidé eux-mêmes de fermer sans compensation. Et Madagascar, ce n'est pas un pays riche. Madagascar, c'est un pays pauvre. Hein? Another potential problem is that sometimes fishers don't want to obey the rules. Poaching during closure periods can dramatically reduce opening day catches, and community support must be strong in order to prevent this. The travail consists à faire de la conservation. Normalement, on fait aussi l'éducation des pêcheurs. Si on, on attrape quelqu'un um, avec de l'ourit, ça n'a pas le droit. Um, on, on doit faire de la contravention. In Rodrigues, total weekly catch was doubled on reopening, with some fishers landing 60 kilograms on a single day. The success of this first closure is very important for us uh, because uh, it has demonstrated how uh, a good management of resources can bring benefits to everyone, to the fishermen themselves. It means management of resources work, and if we continue with that, it will improve the situation of resources and it will benefit the fishermen and the country. On a pêché presque 200 kg de zourite pendant trois jours. Ça va mieux. On a vu qu'avec la fermeture des pêches, l'augmentation des zourites, ça augmente beaucoup. Et tous les pêcheurs sont très contents. Avec la fermeture des pêches, c'est très bien. Community-based marine management is fundamental to the long-term survival of coastal communities 
over 100 million people. Starting in a single village, closures have spread throughout Madagascar, internationally to Rodrigues, and there is growing interest from countries like Kenya and Tanzania. Sayangamba was Gambara themselves.